Welcome back. It's still TV3 New Day. And information we are picking is that some 600 employees of the Holiday Inn uh, Hotel uh, have not received their salary since the month of April. And uh, they are really agitating. You also know that this uh, coronavirus pandemic has caused havoc in several aspects of the economy. And the hardest hit, we're told, is the hospitality industry. We're told from some average occupancy of some 75%. Some are, are doing as low as 2%. Others have shut down altogether. Now, the General Secretary of the Industrial and Commercial Workers Union joins me in studio for us to really understand how huge the situation is and whether other employees are also affected. And he joins me, Nasir Mungkute, is the General Secretary of the Industrial and Commercial Workers Union. Good morning. Good morning and thank you for the opportunity. So 600 employees. Yes. And have you engaged them? Well, we have had a series of meetings with them, trying to explain the circumstances that they find themselves and what, what COVID-19 has also brought in general to everybody. Now, in their case, it's quite peculiar because uh, one had expected that once they are still employees of the business, if they've not been let off, at least the union is expecting to have a seat and see what arrangement could be made. This employer is saying that he's so bankrupt, there's nothing there for him to actually discuss, there's nothing there for him mm -hmm. to actually do. Mm -hmm. Now, the workers have different opinions. They are thinking that before February, the employer was intending to sell the franchise and get a new buyer and then a new investor. Mm -hmm. They claim that some investor had come, some monies have been paid, but our check revealed that those monies have not yet hit the accounts of the uh, manager. And by this, it implies also that if you take a, a crazy look at the sales and purchase agreement with all the hotels, anytime a franchise is moving from one party to other, mm -hmm. there is a need that every debt, including staff, emolument, and whatever arrears are there, are supposed to be paid. Mm -hmm. So I still think that the workers are still secured. Mm -hmm. The painful thing is that what they should, what they'll be living on until this strategic buyer comes in mm -hmm. and then they can get their money. Mm -hmm. But for the month of April and May is ending soon, two months they are in arrears that nothing has been paid to them by way of their salaries. Well, it is a sad situation, but it, it, it is expected. I mean, we are told that the hospitality industry is the hardest hit in this situation. And so what have you been telling them? What is really their status right now? Well, they are still employees of, of their respective you know, hotels because, you know, when you are engaged in any employee, you are given an appointment letter. And until either a termination letter or a dismissal letter is given to you, you are still an employee of the business. We all know what the COVID-19 has brought to us, where their occupancy rate, like you said, has just dropped. So mm -hmm. if you walk in, there is no job for you to do. That is not the making of the employer mm -hmm. because the business is simply not there. And then the employee also appreciating the situation. We believe we have worked over the years. So if nothing at all, there should be some few reserves that we could sit and see Absolutely. how much of this could be given to us mm -hmm. if government you know, was candid enough to say that the next three months I'm going to pay all public workers and civil servants. Whose monies are they going to use to pay them? It is my tax, your mm -hmm. tax. Of course, that's what government depends on. And therefore, in the wisdom of government, it said um, easing electricity bill, water bill by 50%, to these uh, hospitality industries. The pain is that, yes, you are easing the water and electricity, but they are not consuming them because uh, their consumption depends on the rate of occupancy. So once we have less occupancy, we are also not consuming. So that saving is not, really help it is not so relevant. Yeah. It is not mm -hmm. so tangential to the situation they find themselves. Um, I would say a lot of them have done well. Mm -hmm. They've managed to pay March salaries, April salaries, and they are preparing to pay even May, May salaries. Okay, what then happens after June is what we've done several MOUs that will sit down in June also to see the way forward because they cannot continue to also be paying when no work is being done. But government met uh, players in the hospitality industry and promised some three billion cities assistance to the hospitality industry. Do you know how far with that? Well, if you listen to the president at the time, the president said. He has instructed the Minister of Finance to liaise with the Governor of Bank of Ghana to come through the Commercial Bank and make those monies available. Mm -hmm. We didn't hear of any timelines as to when this you know, will be available to them. But if you look at the stature of our hotels that we have, the five-star, four-star, three-stars, 
I can tell you, one, uh, if we take a biscuit alone, they can take all the three billion to get themselves, okay, mm -hmm. re-engineered and come back into normal time. So mm -hmm. we know there will be enough money to go around all. So if that is made available, at least in Accra alone, we know about 18 major hotels that could also go scrambling and looking for it. Mm -hmm. As to how much uh, the portion of it that could come to each hotel uh, will be determined when the committee is put up in place to see how the disbursement is supposed to go. Because that one, so it means that, that we don't have, we don't have the funds here, so we can't even rely on that we, as we speak. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. so you have an idea, I mean, you have a lot of your members, who uh, members of the hospitality industry who belong to the ITU, so you have an idea of how many employees are affected right now. Can you give us a figure? In fact, if we take the hospitality centre, Ghana in total, we are mm -hmm. talking about 560,000 workers. 560,000 workers. workers. Okay. Yes, Ghana in total. with all, But ICU don't manage all of them. In Accra, for example, we have 24 of them that are the domain. If you go to the central region, western region, in all the regions where ICU is presented, the 10 regions before the seas was created, mm -hmm. we have these... Uh, who tells you that we actually manage them. Now, if you go to Kubasi, for example, we have the Golden Beam, we have the Golden Tulip, and the rest of them that ICU manages. Mm -hmm. Now, with all these coming together, they give the total number of employees of 560,000. Mm -hmm. If we add the um, those who operate um, um, these uh, guest houses and all that, okay, we had to put up a data to be able to capture all of them. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, these are the average numbers that have been affected. Mm -hmm. Now, when we come to what is happening now, the hotels are struggling to say, okay, let's keep a skeleton staff. Probably three, five, ten people could be coming. It's better than not doing anything, anything at, at all. all. So these skeleton staff are being kept. For them, because they come to work and they work, they will be receiving their salary. Some have done well. They are actually rotating them so that everybody gets a piece of the pie mm -hmm. that will be available out of the job they will do within this period. Mm -hmm. And then the good news we are hearing also now is that a lot of the people in the diaspora who are coming back, okay, mm -hmm. if they come, they will not be let into the system just like that. The like, hotels would have to house them. Yes, they have that would mean them. some small money for some them. Small. It's, it's good mm -hmm. business. It's mm -hmm. not small money because mm -hmm. they've, they've gone through the earlier one, okay, the earlier people who were quarantine. It was a, quite a good business. So mm -hmm. I think it could also help and change the dynamics as to what support is being given to them by raising of their salaries. So from your projections, if government doesn't uh, uh, make possible the, the intervention, it promised the 3 billion cities by June, it, it will not really go well for some 560,000 employees of the hospitality industry. Most likely, because you see, as it stands now, they still have some fixed cost that is still running okay. because as they sit there now, they need to keep security, they need to keep light, mm -hmm. okay? They need to keep their garden, they need to do some cleaning, other than that, dust and things will settle. So these are costs the employer is not running away from. And if it's not getting revenue and it's incurring this cost, it is also not prudent that as an employer, you go and borrow to come and pay salary. Mm -hmm. How long can they continue to do that? The reserves they have, the reserves are for some specific, you know, assignment within the hospitality. For example, you know, periodically, they must change the beddings, they must change the mattresses, they must change, you know, the facility must be renovated within good periods so that they can maintain their standard and keep the clientele base that they mm -hmm. have. Now, if all these monies keep going this honor, then it means that a good decision ought to be taken as to what are we doing with these workers because we can't also leave them. The pain here is that some of the employees have got their spouses within the business. Hmm. So it's like... Uh, Both the, of them have lost their Yes, jobs. so inflow to the family is virtually cut off. Hmm. And we also experienced this when they did the banking cleansing. A lot of that is in place. So the wake-up call that has come in some of these things is to look at how maybe in future, you know, workers, colleagues, you know, will have to um, minimize their risk in terms of such a thing also appearing again. Mm -hmm. So to the hospitality center as a whole, they are really um, struggling to, you know, make ends meet. Mm -hmm. But we want to salute the employers there for now. Mm -hmm. They have the hope that even nothing at all, this pandemic will shortly come to a close. But how many tourists and how many businessmen will be willing to fly? We still have confidence in the system. Yes. Or, yes. Is that, that what you're, you're saying? Yes, when we have conversations with them, mm -hmm. then they are very hopeful, looking forward that worst case scenario by July, probably the planes will begin to you know, fly in and out again. If that happens, then probably the business will start picking. Mm -hmm. In fact, some have even agreed that as and when the rate of occupancy begin to go up, then they'll be calling more people to come and then they'll have less people 
who might not be receiving full emolument, and then we run from there. You don't have membership uh, in the SME sector, do you? You know, by the definition of who qualifies to be SME sectors, if from what I heard this morning from mm -hmm. you, it's about 900, okay? Mm -hmm. Then it means we have a lot of them. Mm -hmm. uh, because we have a lot of uh, uh, companies. Let's take, for example... No, you. I mean, uh, the last time we hosted the executive director of the MBSSI, she says if you have 99 employees, you qualify to be an SME, maximum 99 employees. So we have some companies under our domain okay. whose employees' membership are not over 100. So I can classify them as SMEs. Okay. So and what are you picking from there? The 600 million cities accessing that amount. And have you had anything? Well, applications them? have started flying. Mm -hmm. Those who are doing it through their apps and then those who are also working straight to the respected offices to collect the forms and fill. Mm -hmm. At the moment, we don't know how the disbursement is going to go. Mm -hmm. But looking at the numbers, if over 180,000 have been earmarked, okay, mm -hmm. to make this application, and looking at 600 million, and then they all don't have the same capacities. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if the ratio by which this money should be shared as to whether or not this money should be enough, it is not money that are meant to go and pay only salaries, but to revive the businesses to come and, and get back on their feet. Because most of them have loans to, to pay. They have loans okay. from the bank. So I don't know whether the committee overseeing this particular thing will also have some casual look with their responsibility at the banks and then some private loans you also have nobody knows okay mm -hmm. and now everybody's jittery mm -hmm. will this thing uh, survive will this thing be able to get the light of the day we don't know how much it's involved like how much is minimum and how much is maximum i'm talking about how much they're giving to the smes have you picked any of the, that information for maybe the employers association yes okay. i had a conversation with the uh, executive director of the Ghana Employer Association, where okay. most of these SMEs are also there. Mm -hmm. And the indications are that minimum is getting about 10,000 and minimum getting about 500,000. Minimum is getting about 10,000. 10, yes. And maximum is getting about 500,000. 500, depending on your budget and what you are into. Exactly. With your uh, capital investment, that will tell how much you'll be giving. Because all said and done, mm -hmm. you'll be expected to pay back. Again, some In a year. Not in a year. Mm. The year you have a moratorium where you're not paying anything. anything. And then you have two years to go ahead and begin to service the loan. Okay. And then it is attracting the lease of interest rate we have ever had, 3%. 3%. So it looks to be a good business. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are hoping that um, they may also manage the risk involved by getting some good collaterals in the event that uh, an employer is not able to actually service the loan. Then mm -hmm. government can fall on it. Because at the end of the day, it is Ghanaians who will have to look at that money and pay. So if the least 10,000 and uh, the highest 500,000, is, is it good enough? Well, it depends on each enterprise's own situation. Mm -hmm. Maybe somebody with just about uh, 20 employees and the business is not too big, 10% uh, uh, 10,000 could be relevant. Mm -hmm. But maybe that could not also help him clear the issues that are before them. Some, mm -hmm. if we, uh, what we just discussed, if we take their debt profile, mm -hmm. you know, some might be owing electricity, they might be owing water, they might be owing other essentials that allow their businesses to run. Mm -hmm. If you look at those ones, then uh, it might be relevant or not relevant. So mm -hmm. each individual SME position will tell whether what but is coming. But someone will say it's a good start. Wonderful by all standards mm -hmm. because getting one is better than getting zero. Mm -hmm. So it depends on how they manage it to turn their businesses around. I've heard you say that you, you are seeking legal redress for the 600 employees of uh, the Holiday Inn Hotel. Is that the case? Yes, because the workers trooped to the airport police and then made several uh, complaints okay. you know, to the police and the police also drew the employer's attention. The employer then also wrote to us and wrote mm -hmm. to the National Labor Commission. Mm -hmm. So once the Labor Commission comes in, then you could see that we have got into the legal terrain and then we shall begin to make ourselves available before the Labor Commission for some directives to be given. But court proceedings take quite a long time. These employees are looking for immediate relief. What is ICU doing? You're 60 years. What are you doing for these employees? Well, the saying in the law corridor says that the wheel of justice grinds slowly by together. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you can't go to court and expect instant justice. Even where we have done the fast track courts, things are still not fast tracking enough over there. Mm -hmm. Because uh, to go through legal processes, uh, all the I's must be dotted and the T must be crossed very well so that mm -hmm. there wouldn't be 
any appeal and then running yourself into the Supreme Court and all that. So the court proceedings will be respected to the latter. Now, thanks for bringing me a reminder of ICU 60 years. Mm -hmm. It's been a very long journey. It's been a checkered journey. And our dominance in the private sector and part of the public sector have made it so relevant to society. Indeed, if you have followed the media terrain, I should have been a singular voice for both civil society and then the working group as well. We've spoken on issue of taxes, we've spoken on issues of uh, bank rates that are given in terms of loans that are given to workers and Ghanaians in general. Mm -hmm. We've also spoken about the, the social security aids application to all. We've also spoken about the, the, the defending the social security scheme as it stands when it came to the tier one, tier two, tier three, our uh, our contribution in getting the art services is so relevant. And then how we have also just opposed ourselves in ensuring that we allow the Labour Act to see the light of the day in terms of provisions there and how worker amendment uh, attitude mm. should actually be. Mm. If you look at the labor terrain now, it's now quiet than ever before. Mm -hmm. Before, there were a lot of hostilities. Mm -hmm. So it means it goes to suggest that the key players or the uh, partners are really complying to mm -hmm. the standards of... of but you of haven't labor. answered my question. What's the immediate relief for the 600 employees? Of immediate relief for in... these 600 okay. employees. You mm -hmm. could also bear with the ICU. Mm -hmm. Once we are having salary cuts, it means that we're also not getting enough. <laughs> and therefore, to say we will uh, assemble 600 people and then mm -hmm. give them you know, some you know, pittance, that is not possible. But what the ICU mm -hmm. is doing now, if this issue should get to the uh, labor courts, we are going to fund and pay any legal cost that is associated with it. Oh, you're ready to fund any legal cost? In fact, that is the service ICU okay. provides to its members. If you're an ICU and have any legal problem, we have a team of retainer lawyers who actually will come in and then run the case for you till even the Supreme Court. Solomon Kote, we are grateful that you made time to be with us this morning. Solomon Thank Kote you. is the General Secretary of the Industrial and Commercial Workers Union. And we're discussing the situation of some 600 employees of the Holiday Inn Hotel who have not been paid since April. Well, Solomon Kote says the ICU is ready to pay for their legal, whatever costs they will bear during this legal process. That's some good news. But there's a lot more coming up on New Day. Bella will be speaking on stigmatization with regards uh, people who have recovered from COVID-19. Don't go away.